Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today, I'm gonna to teach you a concept I came up with, and this here is called the C2C Basket Weave. This is a double-sided project. No matter which side that you turn it on, it looks amazing. And I'm gonna uh, demonstrate the ins and outs of this. So if you know C2C, it's very close to what we're about to do, but there is strategy. I always keep my outside boxes as being flat, and then I start doing my basket weave within here. Um, there is strategy with this kind of concept, which I will demonstrate so you can use any yarn that you want to and as long as the yarn complements the hook and you may want to turn to the ball band for this. This is using Red Heart uh, Roll With It Melange. Uh, one of the complaints that we normally get, which is kind of frustrating in some degree, is that people love texture but they don't like when things are a yarn pig. This here I would consider as a yarn pig. However, the thickness for what you are about to do is double versus something that is more regular C to C. So you can't really always have texture and not have to use extra yarn because I think about it like curtains when they're hanging. If they're flat, there's a certain amount of material that's used. But if you, as soon as you want the curtains to ruffle and have a really nice look when they're dangling, you need more fabric in order to do it. So I always consider textures in the same family as that. Today I'm going to be demonstrating this concept as if you've never done C to C, but also demonstrating this concept as we go. Let's begin. I'll be using a five millimeter size H crochet hook with Karen Big Donut as my sample yarn today. We do have video chapters available if you'd like to skip ahead if you already know how to do C to C to a certain degree and then you can just get right into the um, rows that have the, the basket weave. To start, create a slip knot and I want you to chain six but watch how I do it if you've never done it with me before. It's ch uh, chain six so it's one, two, three, pinch that four, five, six. The one I've pinched is the first stitch that we need to go into. So yarn over, move your thumb back to expose that chain and you're going to double crochet in that one. Plus you're going to double crochet into the other two chains that are down the chain itself. So the outside boxes on this one will always be a flat stitch regular C to C basically. And so there is your first row and you're gonna turn your work and begin row number two. To do number two, just turn your work and you wanna chain a total of six again, but do the concept like I'm showing you. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six. Move your thumb back to expose that one and double crochet in each of the chains. There's always three double crochets in a row even with the basket weave stitch that we'll have in the future. Now, you're going to have to attach this to the first box. And do you see how it's kind of twisted? That happens with everybody. So if it's happening to you, you're not really that special. <laughs> as mean as that sounds. So what I want you to do is just twist this in a way that, see this, this should be facing you. So I'm sitting behind the camera. So twist it in a way that that point is facing you. And then, See the space in between the chain and the first post? That's where you're gonna play and you're just gonna slip stitch. So just go right into the space, yarn over and slip stitch. And how I finish a, a last box on all edges, this is my technique to keep myself really square, is that I want to chain three. And normally what they would do in the old C to C to C videos that I did is that they just tell you to slam in three double crochets into the space. We're still going to have three, but only put two first into the space. So one and two and put the third one that they want to, in order to create this concept into an anchor spot. So if you go into the space, it can always shift, but if you go into an anchor, so just anywhere, as long as it's an outside piece, it will always hold that last stitch to be on an edge and create the flattest edge you've ever seen. So I call that the anchor. So now we're gonna turn your work and do row number three. We're doing row number three and we're going to start and you're gonna chain six. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six. And you are going to move your thumb back and do that one plus the two others that are in a row. If your work has twisted around on you, make sure, like I told you before, is that this is facing towards you. Okay, so I'm right behind the camera. You're going to put up 
here and see the space between this chain and the post. Go right into the space and then you are going to chain three and then double crochet three times in here. Okay, so we are thinking, well, this is the, where is the basket weave? It's gonna happen in the next row. So you need some foundation in order to get the basket weave to work. Now, you're just gonna do this here. You're gonna come into the space, slip stitch, chain three, and it's an outside box. So put in two double crochets into the space. And the third one, you wanna do an anchor. We'll hold it out like that. And now as we begin the fourth row, we're gonna start doing the basket weave. So let's turn your work and let's begin. So the outside boxes will always stay flat. So it's always gonna start and when you're growing out your square or rectangle, then what happens is that you can just continue to go out as big as you need to go. And so you'll always start in the same way. And so you go one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six. Move your thumb back and do that one plus the two others that are here. So this is regular C to C work. Okay, this is facing toward me, which is fine. And see the space here between the post and the chain? You're gonna go in there. Now you're going to chain three, so one, two, three. You're going to put in three double crochets there. And you're like, well, where is the basket weave? It's in the next row, it's in the next box. This box will eventually have basket weave, but not in this row. You're going to slip stitch here. And now we're going to begin to do the basket weave. So what I want to do is that I want to do a basket weave into the one below. I never want to do it on an outside edge. So if I would have tried to do a basket weave here, it would have went into this edge. To do that, you are going to chain three and watch how you do this. See, see the entire box? You want to wrap your yarn around all of that. So yarn over and going in around the whole box, scoop it from behind and pull up and create a space that looks the same. Okay, so it's gonna take you a bit of practice to do this. Okay, just be consistent. Yarn over, pull through two loops and yarn over, pull through two. And this is now wrapped around everything and it's wrapped around on both sides. You wanna keep it in sequential order. So if they start overlapping each other, it looks sloppy. So yarn over, so there, we normally put in three double crochets. This time it's these three in this way. So just move it along, pull through, make it look like the same distance as what you just did. Make it look like it's going in the next one, so not over top. Pull through two and two. Do it one more time, so yarn over and in. Pull through, pull up, look about the same distance. Pull through two and two. And now all three are now wrapped around this, which totally thickens this up and it feels like a pouch of something. I don't know, like a pouch of, like a candy mittens inside a pouch of cellophane, that's what it feels like. So now you're on the outside box, we wanna get bigger, so you're just going to slip stitch, and this is an outside box, so just chain three, and put in two double crochet first, and then just go into the outside one right here, sort of anchor. So you see that you just created a basket weave here, and so when we go back across, we're going to cre uh, create more and more basket weaves. So you see this is a little bit loose, so you're just gonna want to be able to kind of just pull things and just be a little bit more consistent. It may take you a bit of practice, so maybe do a practice watch just to get the feeling of it. Let's do the next row. So if you wanna do another row and get it bigger, so whether it's a square or rectangle at this point, it's always the same. So chain three to, to start, pinch, four, five, six, and just move your thumb out of the way and start double crocheting back.
Okay, you're gonna come in right here, slip stitch. So you can never basket weave around what here because it's an outside box. So the first one out after the first one's here, so I guess the second box is gonna be three double crochets into that space. And then here, you're still gonna go into the space right here. The only difference is, is that the double crochets below here are wrapped around this box. So now we're going to basket weave around this existing box that's here. So let's chain up three to start and let's talk. So we're going to go around this box. So just yarn over and in, pull through. Okay, make it the same distance as what you're used to doing to keep consistent. And so you're essentially covering the top of this box with this layer here. So I was playing around, Daniel was uh, telling me to do the sumer, uh, the Sumerai stitch and I couldn't figure it out, but then I figured this out and I thought, well, geez, this is actually pretty cool too. So just make sure it stays in order so it looks consistent and then you're going to move up. Just slip stitch and now you can do a basket weave around this one here too so chain up three and just grab the whole box that's below once i got hooked on this concept on the original sample that you saw i was like holy cow this is so neat and it's so unusual to see and it literally looks authentic as true basket weave. So once that's in, we're coming to the other one. So this is an outside box, so just chain up three. And then two double crochet first, and the last one will be an anchor. Cool. So you can see that we had one basket weave first time, second row we had two, or the next row we had two, so I bet there's gonna be three of the next one, right? That's true. So let's turn our work and I'll show you one more. And then we'll start decreasing. So to start a new row, if you want it bigger, again, chain three, pinch, four, five, six. So whether you're a square or a rectangle, it won't matter. Um, you're growing it out at this point. And so you'll see in the video descriptions of when there's a rectangle, because I'll show that today too as well. So you're going to connect it so this next box, there's nothing underneath other than the outside box. So you don't wanna basket weave that. So just chain up three and put three double crochet in. Okay, and so then you're looking for the space. And now you can start basket weaving around what you see below. So chain up three. Okay, wrap completely around the box. Just pull things apart if you don't see it. and just be consistent with the length of the yarn. And just make sure that they stay side by side and don't overlap each other, because it'll look better. Like that. Connect it to this one here, and then you're gonna basket weave again. So chain up three and you're gonna basket weave around this box here. So just pull it apart if you don't see it. So if you pull too tight, you'll end up with a gapping hole that will be inconsistent with the rest. So you'll continue along, and so then you can basket weave again. And I would be fussy about it, so if you, you know right away that it, it feels like it's the wrong tension, then change it, because you won't be able to change it in the future. So you're coming to an outside box, 
you're going to chain three and finish that box. So I'm going to carry on now. So you can do that last row over and over and over until you're happy. So whether it's a full size blanket or whatever, baby blanket or whatever you're gonna do, um, you might wanna stretch things out just to have it relax onto itself. But I'm gonna demonstrate on how to start decreasing this as a square, but I will show a rectangle and you'll see that in the video chapters as well. So let's begin that next. So let's demonstrate on how to decrease this as a square. So the square decreases at exactly the same moment so that both sides are, are complete. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six in this case. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So a square will have the same amount of boxes per side. Rectangles clearly not. So to start, you're going to do it this way. The second time we do a decrease, it's gonna be slightly different, but it's gonna be the same concept. Come into the next stitch and just kind of easily just slip stitch yourself and I want you to slip stitch yourself into the chain work. If you go into the space like it suggests on old tutorials, you'll end up with the edge that doesn't look so good. So go into an anchor spot, chain up three, and double crochet into the space right directly below three times. This is an outside box, so there's no basket weaving required. You're going to connect it up here and you can now basket weave because it's not an outside box. So chain up three. And so you're gonna get this one here. So you technically are basket weaving right to the second last boxes of each of the sides. It's just the way that you are growing it out, it doesn't feel that way. Okay, and then you're gonna connect. And so what you're looking for the most is where you're going to stop doing your boxes growing up. So here's the next one. Let's basket weave that one. So when I first started the uh, trials on this, I was uh, trying different areas of where I can stick my hook for this concept. And I realized that it's better just to wrap the whole box and it looks so cool. I was really quite excited about that actually. So I'm going to join and chain up three. Do another basket weave because you can. So I'm kind of rushing a little bit, but you can see there's inconsistency with this last one. So I would want to pull that back out and retry again. It's better to leave something like this in a tutorial than it is to me to demonstrate it being 100% perfect all the time. So again, just try your consistency and, and try not to pretend it's a horse race. Crochet is not meant to be a fast journey. It's meant to be a stitching journey of relaxation and meditation through stitch work. So you'll come up here and this is an outside box. So what I want to do in this particular case is that I do not want to basket weave anything below. So to be consistent, so just chain up three and double crochet three times in. And when you do your slip stitch, you just want to go into an anchor spot. Okay, so don't go into a space like you had been. Go and just nail it right into the chain work itself and that will hold it just like that. So now you're going to turn your work and begin the next one for a decrease. So now that we've already done the decrease, you can see that both of the sides turned and now we're heading towards the point. So you'll continue now and you'll slip stitch yourself all the way. There's a total of four of them now. There was only three when we started this process before, but now there's four. So this is two, three, and the fourth one is the anchor point of the chain work. You're going to chain up three and double crochet three times into there. So it's an outside box, so there's no basket weave at all. Coming in. And now you can basket weave because you're no longer on an outside box. So chain up three and basket weave around the existing below. So I'm a huge fan of texture of crochet if you don't know who I am 
And the reason for it is that I get bored. And so the texture keeps me mentally interested in a project just to see how it'll turn out. So connect it, slip stitch, and then you can basket weave again. connect and you're going to notice that the next one will be an outside box when you come up so you don't want to basket weave that one just stay on the outside there and put three double crochet in and then anchor it so you're going to just continue to work yourself until you're getting closer to the point so your square may be much bigger than this so you'll see that this is working out so turn your work and let's decrease again so to keep on decreasing, you're just going to just slip stitch yourself to the anchor spot. And so then you'll chain up three. This is an outside box, so just three double crochet in. Okay, you'll slip stitch it here to connect. And this is not an outside box, so you can do your basket weave below I've almost I believe that I've almost seen tools and maybe you can comment to it too that will make it almost look like this um, it's like a weaving technique and it's really neat so you see what happens if you go out of order it kind of like crosses over so you can just move things to fix it if you want to Okay, connect it. This one is an outside box that you're about to do. So you just chain up three and slam in three double crochets there. Connect. And then just turn your work and keep on going. So keep decreasing. Okay, chain three, double crochet three times in because it's an outside box. This is the second last uh, side. So I don't want you, to, this is the last box going in, so I don't want you to basket weave below. So just chain a three and put three double crochet in. And you're going to turn your work once you put that in the anchor turn your work and do the very last one so just slip stitch over and you can create a nice little border for something like this chain up three and just finish this off as you know it as an outside box okay, and connect it and what I would do just for consistency is just turn it around and just slip stitch yourself to the corner and then you're done. And if you want to start a border with the same color, you just can start with that same color and that would be how you do it. And you can see, so I would kind of give it a good stretch, let it relax onto itself. And this here would be a basket weave. So I'm going to demonstrate on how to do it as a rectangle next. I'm now going to demonstrate this as a rectangle. And in rectangle, when things are described in patterns, people don't understand that one side they're going to increase and the other side they're going to decre decrease. So what happens with this is that, see how there's one, two, three, four, five, six boxes? There will always be six boxes because we're going to start growing out this way. So this will complete the other side. So if you wanted like maybe a lapgan or something for your bed and you wanted to get it to the width, once you have the width, then you can start and make the rectangle shape with just one side with the decrease and increase. Once you have the length that you want, you want to decrease on both sides to get to the final point. Let's begin. So I'm happy with the width of the boxes and there's right now the equal amount. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to start decreasing this side and increasing the next. To do that, I'm going to slip stitch myself to the anchor point. 
And I haven't explained that yet because if you haven't watched the first part, you haven't seen it. So I'm slip stitched over the first two. I don't want to come into a space like the old uh, tutorials. I want to come into the chain work and just slip stitch there. And so that will hold the outside um, chain work to be exactly on the outside. Chain of three. And in the same space, I want you to put in three double crochet. So the boxes on the outside will be flat, as I mentioned before. So now you're just going to connect it to where you normally would have. And now you can basket weave all the rest of the stuff until you get to the other side. So chain up three and just use that whole box below. Be consistent. It's almost hard to do it, but once you get, uh, do it enough times, you'll be able to regulate how much yarn is actually being put around these boxes. So then you're gonna move up, connect, and you can basket weave the next one. So chain of three. So you're essentially basket weaving most of the boxes until you get to the other side. chain three you can basket weave that one too so my goal is is to keep watch because this is the first time I'm actually creating the rectangle shape so I'm coming across and normally in square this would have been in the last box but I don't want this to be the last box in my case I want to keep it as a rectangle so I am going to basket weave this one and then I slip stitch and I want to create a new box up here to grow it out so chain up three and I put two double crochet in there and then the third one will be the anchor So you can see that we just officially turned the corner down here. So now the whole blanket is gonna start growing up as long as we wanna go. So there's always two rows. Either one side you're starting with a decrease and the other side you're starting with an increase and you keep doing that until you're happy with the length of it and then you'll do a decrease. So to start a new row and we're starting an increase to make it longer, we start off by just chaining six. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six. Move your thumb back and you do your first flat box. So whenever you're increasing, you just chain six. Connect it. And now we can't do any basket weave below because the box, the outside box is below. So we just chain up three and put three double crochet into this one. So we can start basket weaving on the next box. So connect chain three and now you can start basket weaving with what you see below so the basket weave is pretty much ho uh, hiding the top end of the the double crochets and so you're going to do your basket weave all the way to the other side the only difference is that the other side we're going to be in a decreased format so we're not increasing on that side at all so you just keep moving to the other side if you see any imperfections in the way that you're doing it, you have to immediately stop because it's something that you cannot fix later. So if the length of the, of the strands are not enough, they'll never be enough in the future. And if they're too loose, then they will loosen up in time too. So be consistent about it. So you keep on moving across and we are decreasing on the other side when we get there. So we wanna pay attention to the outside boxes Okay, so we got a connection spot and the next one is an outside box so we're not going to basket weave below we're just going to chain three and put in three double crochet in then you're going to connect it to an anchor spot and then you can turn your work 
And so you can repeat the last two rows over and over and your whole blanket will grow up on, an, on a complete rectangle. But eventually, once it's long enough, you're going to start to want to decrease it. And that's what I'm gonna show you next. So let's just say that you have it long enough and your rectangles and you're happy with it. So then you're going to start decreasing. So this side, we're already doing the decrease format. So we just slip stitch ourselves across to the anchor spot, chain three and three double crochet in there. So that keeps that growing up in that side as a decrease. And the other side, when we get there, we're gonna be introducing a decrease for the first time. So we connect and then we chain three and basket weave what we can see. So each time you complete a row in the decrease format, you're actually eliminating out one box. So connect, chain three. So I'm keeping an eye on the edge of the top. And do you see how that looks different than that? So I would want to back that out and try again. three and I can basket weave this one still. I'm not quite there yet. And so my next box in the decrease format would be the last one. So I'm gonna chain three and put in three double crochet there. So normally I would have uh, connected it and then added another box. In this case, I don't. So I want to just go right to the anchor spot with a slip stitch. Okay, that was around the space. So I want to try again. So just go into an anchor spot to hold it, then turn your work. And then you just continue to decrease with what I just showed you. So you slip stitch to the anchor. So there'll be a total of four stitches when you do that. And then you chain three. So one, two, three. And so now you just created the long one to already start going in this direction. So it's heading its way to the corner. So three double crochet is going in. You're just gonna connect it. So you can basket weave below. do that. So how much yarn are you going to use? Um, you'll use more than normal because you are using extra to wrap around those boxes. I don't know what that calculation would be, so you'll have to play with that idea. I know people are going to say, well, how much yarn do you going to need? No idea. It's just a neat stitch concept that I came up with that I really am obsessed with. Um, you know, you do this in cotton yarn, you would have like pot, um, um, what is that called to protect the table surfaces, pot holders or hot pads or whatever. So you're going to connect and this will be the last box. So chain three, three double crochet in. So you'll have the thickness of your cotton yarn to be able to provide extra protection from the table. Connect it to the anchor in turn and then start again and you keep doing this until you get to the corner so in your case if it's a full-size blanket it'll take a while to get there chain up three and this is an outside box so keep it so one of the issues that i had for designing c to c not that you asked is that i always found like i was struggling and i realized that if i just keep those outside boxes flat it's so much easier when you're playing with the stitch work that's involved. So just chain of three, I can basket weave what I see below because it's not an outside box. 
So I was sitting with Jeannie on a cruise ship uh, earlier this year in New Zealand. And I said, you know, I really want to see what more can be done with C2C because I see people doing it all the time, but they're always doing the same stitch. And I said, there's got to be more to it. So my la this is my last box. So I don't want to uh, do basket weaving. I just want to finish it to keep the outside box flat. So three double crochet into the space. So I think there's always a will, there's always a way when there's a strong enough desire to figure things out. And that's what I'm kind of doing here. And now I got to turn. So we're going to continue. So we've gotten some, I've gotten some complaints. Um, people telling me that they're sick and tired of the C2C and hoping I wouldn't be doing this series. But I think in the long run, I think it's just beneficial to have something like this. The other thing to keep in mind too is that everybody has a different desire in crochet. So what's boring for one person isn't for another. Um, I, uh, I don't mind doing stuffies, but I don't do a great job with those. So it really kind of sucks for how my stuff comes out. <laughs> So I'm gonna join it here, and I cannot do any basket weave below because it is an outside box that's going in. So chain three, I put three double crochet in. And then you'll do an anchor. Turn. Okay. And then you'll do your very last box, and that's just a regular chain three. I'm gonna demonstrate a border in a few moments as well. Okay, you're gonna come in, and then you're gonna to go to the anchor. And what I would do, just for consistency of the edge, I would turn it, and then just slip stitch yourself right to the anchor spot of the top of the chain, where you have been normally doing it. So if you want to keep this color, you just have to start from this point. But if you want to get rid of it, you can. And I'm going to start demonstrating then how to do a border. I'm going to demonstrate a couple rounds of a really easy border that you can apply to something like this. So right where you finish, you can start there or any corner. It really doesn't matter. And you're just going to go into a corner that will hold your stitch. I'm just doing new yarn just to keep it more interesting for myself. So I'm just going to attach it, chain one. And in the same spot as the join, I'm gonna single crochet, chain three, and single crochet. Now you're just gonna throw the loose end to the other side. You're now going to chain three. And do you see the spaces between the boxes? That's where you wanna play. So you can either slip stitch or you can just single crochet, which I recommend better. And then you can just chain three and then just go in the spaces between and chain three and this is allowing you to have a nice equally spaced border at the end of this so chain three so when you get to your corner which i'll get there in a second um, you're always going to do the same thing on this round so you'll chain three before you get there and just in the corner you'll single crochet chain three and single crochet into the same spot turn your work chain three and then come between the boxes. So single crochet, chain three, and come in between. So please do this all the way around for round number one, and then I'll be back in a moment. When you get back around, you're just gonna chain three and then attach it to the first single crochet. And if it were me and I were you, this is what I would do. On the next one, I would complete this as the, being the final of the bordering, because I think the stitch work is enough. So you're just gonna slip stitch to the corner space, chain three, and put two more double crochet in. And then chain two, and then in the same spot, put in three double crochet. And so your corners are technically gonna be three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So in each one of the chain three spaces, you're just gonna apply one, or sorry, you're gonna apply three double crochets in each. So you're just gonna go right there and that'll equally space out this. So if you wanna add any more to the border, you can do it after this round, or you can done something differently. Um, the way that I've attached the border uh, to the original is a great way to have a stabilizer to be able to really play with other stitches in the future. I noticed that I'm only putting three double crochets into each one of the stitches. So it's not like it's three double crochets and there's something in the chain or uh, single crochets below. It's just three into each. When you get to your next corner, it'll be three double crochet, 
chain two, three double crochet, and you'll keep moseying on around, and please do that, and I'll see you at the end of the round in a moment. When you get back around, you're just filling in the final space. You've already started your corner, and you just have to slip stitch and get rid of your yarn, and therefore this would be the end of your whole process. And it just I just don't think the border uh, needs to be overcomplicated because the really the fun work is within the stitch work itself. We hope you have a good one, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.